Stephen Key, I'm back. In today's video, I'm going to, I'm going to give you 11 ways to stop companies from ripping off your invention. I don't think it happens very often, but I know a lot of people are fearful. You shouldn't be fearful. You should be knowledgeable. And I'm going to give you some great information. So this video, listen up, is 11 ways to stop companies from stealing, infringing, copycatting your idea and your invention. So let's jump in. First, number one, don't disclose your idea to anyone. I said it. Don't do it. Don't put it on Facebook. Don't put it on Instagram. Don't put it on LinkedIn. Looking, hopefully, just hoping someone's going to come by and they're going to help you. Don't do that because they're not coming by. In fact, you got to hunt them down. So don't disclose your idea to anyone. There you go. Number two. Here it is. Crowdfunding. If you're going to put your idea, your invention on crowdfunding, do it cautiously. Someone said the other day to me, and I believe this is true, crowdfunding sites are basically a catalog for copycatters. That's right. If you're successful on a crowdfunding site, you're going to have you're going to have some copycats. So just be prepared. And the two ways to prepare for that to stop those guys is filing for a trademark and a design patent because they're going to copy you exactly. And those are two tools you can use to fight back. But realize it's going to take 10 months to get those tools. So don't get in a rush. If you're going to be on crowdfunding, do that first. At least you've got some something to, to fight to fight them. All right. Number three. License your invention to a big company. There you go. Now, what I like about licensing, because you know that's all I talk about, talk about is licensing because today it's speed to market. In fact, someone said to me, today's is about selling, selling first and selling fast. And the best way to do that is to license it to a company that's already in business, that already has the shelf space, and they can give you some type of protection because they're already there. That's step number three, or, or the third way. The fourth way, be selective on whoever you're going to work with. I said it. Do your back, do a background check on everybody. Do type in their name, type in complaints, type in lawsuits, and see what comes up. And please dig a little bit. Just because they've got a, a great rating by the by the what is it, the Better Business Bureau, that doesn't mean squat. Dig deeper, see what people are saying about the company, and read between the lines. If people have a complaint about maybe they didn't ship the product on time, who cares? But if you see if you see they have a track record of people that are screaming at them that they're not treating people fairly and they're in lawsuits and litigations, you might want to find a different company. All right. The fifth way. Um, file protection, right? Don't share any of your confidential information with anyone before you file some type of intellectual property. And I like a provisional patent application. You can do it yourself. It's extremely affordable. It gives you patent pending status for one year. I said it. Do it. It's a great tool. So don't share any confidential information with anyone before you have before you file your intellectual property. OK, the sixth way who sell the benefit first. There you go. What I like about the strategy, you don't have to show your prototype. You don't have to show how you're going to make it. You don't have to show all the details. Sell the benefit first with the sell sheet, a one line benefit statement, get some interest. And then once they're interested, right, then have them sign an NDA. There you go. It's really simple. Now, NDAs, I don't think that's going to stop anybody, right? If they're a bad company, they're going to be bad regardless of an NDA. But you've, you've already done a background check. But an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, what it does is sets this tone of professionalism, right? And there's all these different types of NDAs. Learn as much as you can about it. Don't find one on the Internet and cannibalize it or Frankenstein it and, and, and use it. If you're really serious, contact a patent attorney or a licensing attorney and get an NDA that works for you. All right, there you go. Way number seven, paper trail. Document every phone call, every meeting with next steps. 
have a paper trail. What was discussed and what are you going to do next? What are they going to do next? Just do that. It's, it's number one, it's a great way to keep notes. It's a great way to be a project manager, but it kind of shows, you know, if anybody's wondering what happened, you have this paper trail that kind of explains exactly what was disclosed. It's a great tool. It's easy to do and you should just do it. All right. Number eight, the eighth way, outthink them. There you go. Be faster than your feet. You're smaller. You're an inventor. You're thinking about your idea all the time. So by doing that, this is what I want you to do. Steal it from yourself. That's right. Think of all the different ways someone else would get around your idea and file intellectual property, file a provisional patent application and all the variations, all the different ways someone would get around you. Steal it from yourself. All right. Number nine, the ninth way. Understand all the manufacturing techniques. There you go, right? It's really about manufacturing your idea at the lowest price point. I think that has value and that information, you should file a provisional patent application on just the method of manufacturing. If you cannot find that information, go online, go to YouTube, type in manufacturing or whatever, or even visit a manufacturing facility and see how they're doing things. Don't ask them how to manufacture your idea, right? But understand manufacturing techniques and include that in, in any of your intellectual property. I think that has value and find the cheapest way to make it. That has more value than you can believe. All right. The 10th way, Whew, almost, almost done. Understand the intellectual property landscape. That's right. Search for prior patents and know, know your point of difference because you're always going to find prior patents. It shouldn't stop you, especially if your idea is not on the market, but there's prior patents. Understand what was invented and where are the holes. See, this is what I believe. If you if your idea is not on the market, but there's a prior patent, something went wrong. Find out what went wrong and file your intellectual property on that. Know your point of difference because companies are going to ask you sometimes, hey, there's some prior art on this idea. So why am I paying you? But if you know the prior art, you can use that point of difference as a selling tool. It's very, very powerful. OK, the last one. Ooh. When it's appropriate and when you need a patent attorney, find a great patent attorney. Find a patent attorney that has prosecuted and drafted many, many patents. You can go to the USPTO and you can see how many patents your patent attorney has filed and actually received. And if he hasn't received very many, you might want to find another one. But also ask them, how do they work with patent examiners? It's so important because that you're going to get some office actions eventually. And your patent attorney needs to be able to really put the charm on and have a great bedside manner to work with those patent examiners through the office actions. So find a great patent attorney, make sure he's got a lot of patents and he's got a great bedside manner. Now, I just gave you, I just gave you 11 ways to stop those companies from ripping off your invention. But I have to state this. I don't think it happens very often. And maybe because I'm teaching you to find those good companies. I'm teaching you to be a professional. I'm teaching you to give them good ideas that make sense and find those open innovation companies. That's why I don't think it happens. I don't see it. But if you're worried, this information will help you. Once again, Stephen Key here. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Stephen Key. And I just want to thank you for watching InventRight TV. We're here to save you time, save you money, and show you how you can bring your products to market through licensing. So please subscribe down below, click on the button and tell your friends. Thank you.